the barriers that exist within the education system. The brother talks about school as not being places that really wants to create a learned population of anyone other than the elites who don't go to the schools where their education is going to be undermined anyway because they go to the school where if they are a talkative child, they see a politician, a lawyer, as anyone who has to stand up in front of the unargumentative child will be encouraged and nurtured to deliver to the community, to lead the community. In the state schools, not so. They are going to quash that child no matter how they will do that. So our history, the supplementary schools, I appall because they are doing what the schools should be doing. And unless, you know, we talked earlier about the sort of the black schools. Well, they're not going to happen because there's no one's going to support them. Even within our own community, they're not supporting them. And, you know, we now have a minister, Michael Gove, who's talking all the negative nonsense that I've ever heard about education. And it's not, well, in, and he is not going to support anything like that. The school that was closed, it's a, a, a Muslim school. What were they doing that other schools didn't do? I'm, I'm glad you mentioned um, supplementary schools. That's me, me and Mara. <laughs> but I'm glad you mentioned supplementary schools because at the end of the day, I'm not into this begging, begging of the government to be educating us. We have our supplementary school system. It's been here um, for 60 years in this country. And our parents are not bringing our children to those schools anymore. They're very happy to rely on the, on the, on the system that's, that's there already. And that is our problem. That's the biggest problem with us. We're too happy bringing our children to the education system that is there. You know, we can we need the schools with, to a certain extent. We need the paperwork, we need the exam to go get jobs because we are not employing ourselves. So we need to go to other cultures to employ our children. But in the, in the thing is, we're not employing our children, and we're not in, encouraging them to be business owners and entrepreneurs. And when they are business owners, owners and entrepreneurs, we are not buying from them. So there's a big mind, mentality um, mentality uh, mind shift that needs to happen. But I, I do feel the question was answered. The, the panel made it clear: we are not ready to come together for one resource. There's too many egos out there, too many people want their own. And until people can grow up, the adults now, until they can grow up and say, listen, let's get together because we need our own resource, then it will happen. But the question, and I feel as though the question was answered. Did you, did you feel the question was answered? It was, we need to be doing our own. And we do have people fighting hard for our own full-time schools, but not enough people are on board. We have a collection of 10 schools uh, put in an application uh, under the free school license with an African curriculum. But they're fighting for people to come on board the process to do the logistics, to do the, the paperwork, to do the, the curriculum, to fund it even. Too many people are sitting there or waiting for the black schools to be set up. Not enough people actually come on board. I've been involved, I've been involved with trying to set up a black school for the last six years. I'm with the Art School of Excellence. We put in two proposals. And like Brother Andrew said before, the um, Diaspora Academy, they were turned down. There's two black head teachers of 20 years of experience who want to train boys. It wasn't targeted at black boys, but it's a school for boys to, to encourage them to be entrepreneurs. They were turned down saying they were too, too ambitious. But the, 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 the answer is that we put our hand in our pocket and fund our own schools because the government ain't going to do it. We've been in this country long enough haven't we learned anything? So if anybody wants our own full-time schools, get yourselves off the chair and get involved in these committees to set these up. Or if you haven't got time for that, put your hand in your pocket and fund the people that are going to set these schools up. Because as far as I'm concerned, that is the only way we're going to get our own schools and teach our children our history from our perspective. Let me say something. Our own schools, what do you think? <laughs> um, I think for anyone who does a lot of work in school, so I know that um, Rabbi Mohammed can speak on this as well. Um, when you hear that phrase, you're expecting too much, what in our experience we do experience is actually the exact opposite. We set really high goals as far as their standards are concerned, and not only do they meet them, they exceed them. And then what happens afterwards is, is, is really, really where it gets interesting. Um, me personally, um, the only reason why I got into this, you know, these types of arenas in the first place is because 
I was wondering why we had to take five years to do a GCSE. So I just decided to take a year eight class through their GCSEs. You know, it wasn't a, it wasn't a, what do you call it? Um, they usually have a gifted and talented group of people and maybe it's you know, one person over there, one person over there, maybe five people will do a GCSE there. <coughs> and I just decided the whole class is gonna do their GCSEs. We're gonna just aim for the GCSEs. And then the whole class passed with C's or above and one student got an A. And so the question then became, well, basically, it, it created too many questions. And I thought I was going to get pats on the back and rounds of applause for getting these students through their GCSEs at age 12. But no, it caused nothing but drama. Um, so I think what we do is we see, I mean, it's frustrating because it's, it's our life work, you know. It's when, when you have a student who nobody else has been able to get through to, you talk to them for 10 minutes, they talk to you with such respect, it's, it's always a back and forth, and then afterwards somebody talks to them with negativity and they, go, they revert back to their... You, you see that all the time, right? And, um, and all they needed was a little bit of respect. And all they needed was someone to you know, show them. them some love. You know, that, that same thing about you know, the, the sharing thing that Brother Mohammed was talking about, it's interesting because I have a lot of com conversations about relationships, and everything that he said is the same thing for love. People, people want to have a relationship, but they don't want to give anything. And they don't understand why the relationship don't work. <laughs> it's like, it, you, it, uh, anyway. So I, just, want, yeah. so I just want to ask um, something. Um, the, um, well, the, the year eight which you taught, mm -hmm. um, um, and they got to GCSEs early, would there be a way that that could be like scalable, um, or like a, uh, would there be a way to reproduce it on a large, a large scale? Like, you know, potentially, I don't know, um, online learning or um, teaching other teachers to sort of deliver a lesson in that way? This, this, was, the, this was the interesting thing. Because people, people came to me, because I'm a maths teacher, so they came to me and said, you must be teaching maths in such an amazing way, we need to know what it is that you did. I said, I said first of all, I took all of the math stuff off of the walls. Um, the only thing that was on my walls was like pictures of Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, um, and this is a classroom which is 20% black students, 20% African students, right? So I've got Vietnamese students in there, I've got Polish students in there, I've got Afghanistani children in there, um, and as, as has been said before, when we do things in a way which is you know, positive for African students, everybody benefits because it's an holistic approach. So when people were asking me the question, what is it that you do? Can we package it? Can we resell it? Can we deliver it? I was like, all I was doing was teaching African history first, because that's all I was doing. I had, the, I had the curriculum, and I said, I know it's supposed to be taught over, you know, let's say three months. This amount of curriculum is supposed to be taught over three months. We're going to do it in three weeks, and for the rest of the time, I'm going to be teaching African history. That's what I did. So in terms of can you package it and resell it, they're not doing that. They're not, they're not going to do it. Um, but, but I mean, if, you know, because for me personally, it would be something which, like, that like I would like to, you know, I, I, I would like to have the knowledge of, you know, mm. like, um, my, um, my younger brother's eight years old now, so, you know, when he's um, 12, sorry. yeah, sorry, sorry, my younger brother's eight years old now, so when he's like 12, 13, 14, mm -hmm. like, um, like, I'm, I'm thinking up all these innovative ways of how to educate him in a way which um, allows him to learn faster than, you know, the, the current kind of system. There's one way, there's only one way. Mm. When they love themselves, yes. when they love themselves, let, let's, let's trace, it, trace it backwards, yeah? Me being a mathematician. All right, so you want A stars, right? From your, from your child, your niece, your nephew, your child, or whatever, right? You want A stars, so you need them to have high aspirations, yeah? If you want them to have high aspirations, you need, to have, you need them to have high expectations for themselves. If you want them to have high expectations of themselves, you need them to value themselves. If you want them to value themselves, then they have to love themselves. If they want to love themselves, they have to know themselves. If they need to know themselves, they need to have learned about themselves. And if you need to learn about yourself, you need to learn about your history, your culture, your heritage. So boom, you've just gone from, you want A stars, learn black history. But that's why I say, you know, I think it's, that's why I say I think it's you know essential to um, I don't want to use the word package, mm -hmm. but that's why I think it's essential to 
to, to make that, you know, sort of as accessible as possible because there are a lot of adults walking around who haven't gone through those steps which you just mentioned. And they've got children. And they have children. Right. So I think it's really essential, you know, like to put that together if, you know, you know, if it's like filming a DVD or, um, you know, writing up a curriculum, I think that would be really, really, really uh, helpful, you know. Um, to find a marketer, put it out there. I think it really is valuable because, you know, what you just said, getting to getting um, young people, to, getting young people to um, do their GCSEs at that age, that's a value for any community. Anybody, you know, would want their child to be able to do that. So you have a value package right there. Okay. I've noticed, I know there's two questions here, so I'm just going to say very quickly. That was what they did in year eight, but when you when you understand what's important, you realize that's not the goal. So what we did next year, what I did next year, was then I stopped teaching. I think there's one quote um, where any good teacher, their aim should be to make themselves redundant. So basically what I did was I said, I'm not teaching you anymore. All those people who've got C's need to move to B's. All the people who've got B's need to move to A's and blah, blah, blah. So what you're going to have to do is the people who... Um, who are good at a particular area, you're going to have to teach the people who are not good in that particular area. So every day somebody had to teach something. So if this was the class, then it'd be like, you're doing Pythagoras tomorrow, you're doing trigonometry the day after, you're doing this. And basically, I sat back and just watched, made sure that they were doing it correctly. Say again? That's teaching. Right, right, right. But, you know, what was important then was that, because I knew that I was going to leave that school, but I needed to make sure, because it had happened before, that when I leave, that if they put a supply teacher in my place, that their grades don't just hit the, hit the yes. floor. Mm. So when we taught them to teach themselves, yeah. and a lot of parents started complaining and saying, what's going on? We heard that this guy's not even teaching. Um, when we put that into place, then it just created a situation where they didn't need to rely on anybody, and that's fundamentally what our community needs. We need to make sure that we don't need to rely on anybody but our own community, but that requires a certain mindset, and it requires someone to teach it, and it requires those, those people to take that on board and put it in effect. So, you know, there's there's a book that Brother Muhammad's got. You know, you need to just get the contact details and find out, you know, what that book is and what it, because, you know, you're liking what you're hearing, you know, but we need to now put it into practice. And that's going to require people to put money, in their, you know, hands in their pockets and dish out some money. There's the Nubian Jack board game, which should be in every household anyway. If you don't have it, you need to just go get it. Don't talk about it. Don't talk about, oh, I went to a great meeting today. Just get the thing. I've got resources on the back table of mine. I think I've got like a world map on there, which is an accurate world map, which is two pound. So just, you know, there's there's action required, which is which goes back to love. Because you can talk about, oh, I'm in this relationship, blah, 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 all you want. But if you don't actually show that person love, then they're leaving you. So, you know what I mean? It comes down to action at the end of the day. No, sir, you asked a... No, sir. Yeah, you asked a very important question. How can you find what Neil was giving uh, to his students who accelerated their learning? How can you give that to someone you love, someone you care for? You have to find a person like Neil who can do it. It's an individual who is able to empower others to learn for themselves and to baby them along that process until they become self-motivated. Self self you know, driving but it starts with a person if you're lucky you can find an organization it's unlikely to be in a package it's a person it's a spirit that has to actually instill that in others you see it there in Neil he's described it find that find that person for your loved one uh, and just um, just to come to that point as well um, I just thought I'm not sure if this is you know um, like readily available right now um, but you know, there's like the Sunday schools, and there's you know um, the you know black schools or schools that are black schools that are trying to be open. But what about say something like a um, black sort of teaching agency, you know, that you know has teachers like me or like uh, Andrew uh, going out to um, to people's houses and, and tutoring, you know? Because for my, my myself personally, I had someone come come around. Um, to um, discuss something about uh, to, with my nephew, uh, which was about uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he was trying to sit down and tell me, um, you know, he he can additionally teach this and this and this. 
outside of school so that he boosts his school uh, aptitude. Okay. But what if there was something like that focused for? Brother, I can answer that. On the NAB's website, which is the three W's, N-A-B-S-S.org.uk, there is a notice board. And on that notice board are names and details of tutors of African heritage who are willing to go to people's homes and teach them alongside the directory of black Saturday schools, after school clubs and Sunday schools where parents should be sending their children. And I did an article in The Voice newspaper last year where I said blatantly, as far as I'm concerned, it should be compulsory for every African child in this country to go to a African-centered supplementary school. Um, one more question? Sorry, sorry, before we, before we pond that, real quick what you can do, everybody in here should do anyway, is get the details of people who you've heard and then demand, like, not ask politely, go to your, you know, the school of your child or the school of your niece or the school of your nephew, school of your little cousin, and go to the school and demand that that person comes and does a presentation to all students. You can do that today because you can take my details and get me into your school. You can take Robert Mohammed's details and get her into the school. This book should be around for you know access for everybody. I got this as soon as I saw it. Um, I can't even remember where I got it, but you can get you can get mayoress. You can get this sister, a mayoress to come into a school. How powerful is that? So that should be the absolute basic fundamental least thing that you could do in order to help not only your child, because unfortunately that's another thing that we tend to do, is to say, oh, my child's all right. Um, to yeah, help the community, just in terms of the demonstration, the action that we need to see. So I tell you, go. Um, I'm just gonna walk in front here and um, do this quick. You know, it's a privilege to be here today. Um, I love this point, you know, sometimes we underestimate what we, an individual can do. But um, I'm privileged to be among people that have took the bull by the horn and have been doing something. At this point, thank you, Meredith, and thank you, um, Anu Mohamed, you know, he's been um, helping me as well. I'm going to read it before I do the presentation of this to our dear It says, I am an African child, born with a skin the color of chocolate, bright, brilliant, and articulate. Strong and bold and gifted, talented enough to be the best, I am an African child. Often the target of pity, my future is not confined to charity. Give me the gift of a lifetime, give me a dream, a door of opportunity. I will thrive, I am an African child. Do not hide my fault, show me my own. I am like any other, teach me to dream and I will become. I am an African child. I am the son, daughter of the soil, rich in texture and content, full of potential for a better tomorrow. Teach me discipline, teach me character, teach me hard work, teach me to think like the star within me. I am an African child. I can be extraordinary. Call me William Kamkwamba, the inventor. Give me a library with books. Give me a scrapyard and discarded electronics. Give me a broken bicycle, plus the freedom to be me, and I will build you a windmill. I am an African child. We are the new generation, not afraid to be us. Uniquely gifted, black and talented, shining like the stars we are. We are the children of Africa, making the best of us. Yes, I am an African child. I'd like to present this copy to Nair for the great work he is doing. Thank you very much. It's a beautiful poem. Uh, thank you very much. I don't get many awards in my lifetime. <laughs> so, yes, thank you very much. And this is uh, very well presented. So, thank you very much. And so, um, for the last 10 minutes, can we um, just round off why is it we need African Her uh, Heritage Month? Um, when do we want it? February or October? So, we'll round off the final remarks from the panel. I mean, um, you know, what to really add? I mean, we definitely need it. Um, whether it's October, February, July, wherever, we need it because there's a revolution of the mind that has to take place and it starts with ourselves. I'll just end by saying that, um, yes, we need uh, it all along, but I'll say to everybody here, you are the change you've been waiting for. We're not waiting for anybody to do anything. You are the change you've been waiting for. So what you need to ask ourselves, including myself, what can I do 
to bring about the change I want to see. If I want something set up, maybe I need to see how I can set it up. I've spoken a lot too much already, so um, yeah, I'm uh, all for uh, African History Month and uh, February or October. I think I would like February just because it would then link us and you know the whole unity thing, link us with other countries around the world. And, yeah, make us international. Yeah, but uh, I think uh, what I was going to say as well has been said by everybody. Um, yeah, uh, I think it's important to have African Heritage Month. Uh, but most importantly, um, uh, I think that it's important that we use the tools that are available to us to make sure that uh, we promote ourselves, we rebrand ourselves in the way in which we want to be seen, in the way we want to see ourselves. I think the brother made a very important point that we all need to take on board. If we want certain books out there, maybe we need to go to the schools and demand, as he said, that I want this particular book there. And then the school will be forced to take note. We need to go there and demand the kind of books that we want to see there. Tell the school, I want this book there. Yeah, people, so the overall message is, you're perfectly willing to, um, perfectly legal to complain the next part is actually do something and be proactive. Be a parent governor and I've just done workshops on being um, parent governors, getting on board on the inside to make changes on the outside. You know, um, we go to the PTA, communicate with the school, communicate with the people that make the, the decisions in that community, which are the MPs and the, and the councillors. There's no point to chat to your friend about we want this, what, what this, if your friend ain't gonna do anything. Speak to the people who make the decisions and do it en masse. By yourself is not enough. So galvanize people who think like you or want the same things and write, demonstrate on what you need to do to get what you need because complaining alone never ever changes anything in history. So thank you very much. My name is Nia Imara from the National Association of Black Submarine Schools. The website is the three W's, nabss.org.uk. Thank you very much. <laughs>